Welcome to the presentation of Fundamentals of Electrical Drives. Myself, M. Kaliyamurthy, working as an associate professor in the Department of Electrical Electronics Engineering of PSNA College of Engineering and Technology, Dindical in Tamil Nadu. In order to understand the fundamentals of electrical drives, the listener should have undergone some courses, namely power electronics, control systems and electrical machines. Along with these three, the listener should also have a basic knowledge of electric circuits. Assuming that the listener has good knowledge on the power electronics, control systems, electrical machines and electric circuits, I further proceed my lecture. In ancient days, humans and animal power are the traditional modes of power utilized by the mankind to drive different types of machines required by the people during various stages of the development. The old rope car is one example. In olden days, rope car were used to travel for traveling from hills to plains and these rope cars were driven by humans in the earlier days. Later, the bullocks were trained properly and they were utilized to drive the bullock carts. Later, after a few time, after a few years passed away from the bullocks, year, bullocks age, wind power were utilized. Wind power were used in many applications such as pumping in olden days. Later, after the industrial revolution, steam power and IC engines were developed for driving machines. However, by the end of 19th century, three-phase AC power has become more popular and which were completely transformed the entire nature of electrical drives. The electric motors has now become the main source of any driving equipment. An electric drive has so many advantages over the other forms of drives that it can replace almost all, all of them in any industries. The electric drive makes use of electric motors as prime movers. So, electrical drives has lot of subunits in it. Electrical drive can be classified into uh, induction motor drive, DC motor drive, synchronous motor drive, special electrical machines drive and so on. So, electric drive is a subject which has to have a complete relationship between the control system, power electronics and the electrical machines. So, it is a subject which is a uh, which, which is required for any electrical engineer should have a very depth knowledge on it. So it is not quite simple. So journey of 1000 miles of this electrical drives should start only with a single step. So now what is the meaning of electrical drive? Before going to it, what do you mean by a drive system? Why we require it? Most of the production equipment used in modern industrial undertakings consists of three important components namely the prime mover, the energy transmitting device and the actual apparatus or the equipment that performs the desired job. So motion control is required in large number of industry, industrial and domestic applications like in the transportation system we require a motion control, in rolling mills we require a motion control, paper mills, textile mills what not in all the industries we require motion control so systems employed in motion control are called as drives systems which are employed in motion control are called as drives motion control which in turn requires prime movers so drives that employ electric motors as a prime movers are called as electric drives but there are large number of prime movers can be used instead of electric motors such as we can use diesel or petrol engines as a prime mover or we can use gas or steam turbines also as a prime movers and we can even use hydraulic motors also as a prime mover. So uh, systems or driving systems which employ electric motors as a prime movers are called as electrical drives. So in general I can put something like this. Systems employed in motion control are called as drives. Motion control in turn requires prime movers. And if I use electric motor as a prime mover, then we call it as an electrical drive. Say for example, in an automobile, I can use IC engines, which means it is a mechanical prime mover. So it is a mechanical drive. If I use the same automobile, if I use electric motor as a prime mover, then we call it as an electrical drive. Now let us see what are all the advantages of electrical drives over other sort of drives. They have flexible control characteristics. Electrical drives have very flexible control characteristics. 
especially when power electronics converters are used they are more flexible the steady state and dynamic characteristics of any electrical drive can be shaped to satisfy the load requirement which is not possible with the other sort of driving systems speed can be controlled and if required they can be controlled over wide range that, that is down from zero zero speed to the maximum speed electrical braking can be employed control gear requirement for speed control starting and braking is usually very simple and easy to operate also this is one of the major advantage of the electrical drive when compared with other sort of drives and the electrical drives are available in a wide range of speed torque and power they have higher efficiency no load losses of the electrical drives are very very low low load losses are very very low and considerable short time overloading capacity that is when it is started immediately it can be fully loaded to its maximum extent without any problem which is not possible with the help of mechanical drives and can be made variety in variety of designs to make them compatible with the loading systems compared with other prime movers they have longer life low noise low maintenance and requirements and they are cleaner in operation that is they do not have any infection on the pollution of the uh, pollution polluting the environment that is when we go for a mechanical driving systems it injects lot of carbon dioxide into the system into the atmosphere which spoils the entire atmosphere and causes greenhouse effects that is not in the case of the electrical driving system and electrical energy it is easily transportable it can be easily transportable from one point to another whereas a mechanical energy it is very very difficult then it is adaptable in almost all the environment conditions that is adaptable in almost all environment conditions such as explosive and radioactive environment and it can be submerged into the liquids example monoblock pumps or submergible pumps which can be put inside the water and it can be vertical mounted horizontal mounted and it can suit all operating condi condition environments and it can operate in all the four quadrants of the speed torque plane it can operate in all the four quadrants of the speed torque plane that is it can operate in forward motoring reverse motoring forward gen regeneration reverse de regeneration everything is possible with the help of uh, electrical drive electrical braking gives smooth declaration and increases life of the equipment compared with other forms of braking when regenerative braking is possible considerable amount of saving of energy can also be achieved these features are not available with other sort of prime movers and very important point this electrical drives no need not to be refilled or warm up at any point of time they can be started instantly instantly and immediately it can be fully loaded without any problem so because of these advantages the electrical drives are preferred over the other sort of driving system nowadays in most of the industries now let us have a quick look on the conventional electric drive which was used in the olden days in the industries now let us assume i have a load which requires a variable speed operation for this i require some system something like what i have shown in the figure i have an ac motor which is coupled with a dc generator and the armature of a dc generator and the armature of a dc motor are linked and the dc motor is coupled to the load which has to be controlled now the ac motor is being excited when the fixer supply so the speed of a ac motor will be also fixed so since the ac motor is coupled with a dc generator the dc generator also rotates at the fixed speed normally the dc generator used is a separately excited dc generator so if i try to vary the field current of a dc generator the armature voltage which is generator from the dc generator also varies so the dc motor is coupled to a dc generator which gets a variable dc supply from the dc generator since by varying the field current of the dc generator so once the armature of a dc motor is getting a variable dc supply the speed of the motor can also be varied since the speed of the motor is directly proportional to the armature voltage this was a system which is used to control the loads 
which was used in the olden industries but this system is has lot of disadvantages let us see it is a bulky in size say for example to control a particular motor i require three other machines so the system generally becomes so bulky it is high expensive to control one load i require three machines which is so costly when compared with other type of control methods it is inefficient because three machines generally rotating machines have an efficiency from 9 to 2 uh, 80 to 85 to 90 so automatically the overall efficiency of the system also reduces it is so complex in order to control one load i have to control three machines so this was a system which is known as a wall linear system which was introduced in the years of 1980s. So, because of the problems associated with the large linear system, we have to switch on to some other sort of a drive system which, is, which, is, which eliminates all these disadvantages. This becomes possible in the years of 1960s after the invention of power electronic devices. Now, let us see the block diagram of the modern electric drive. The modern electric drive consists of a power processing unit which is in general a power electronic system which is used to control the motor. The motor is being coupled with the load and it has a control circuitry also. The control circuitry generates the firing pulses required for the power electronic system which is in the power processing unit and the feedback from the motor is being taken in order to produce the firing pulses according to the requirement. So this is the general block diagram of a modern electric circuit, electric drives. The main advantages of this modern electric drives when compared with the conventional electric drive is it is very small and very compact, highly flexible, it is very efficient and it is also intradisciplinary. So general, generally I require a control reference which is being dictated from the user and the feedback of the motor is being taken and those two are being compared and the control action is being taken to fire the or trigger the power electronic switches present in the power processing unit. The power source in turn may be an AC or a DC and the motor can also be an AC induction, AC motor or a DC motor. The loads are generally a machinery which is designed to accomplish a given task. It may be a fan, pump, ro robots washing machines, machine tools, trains and drills or etc. Now let us see the classifications of electrical drives. Due to lack of technology, electrical drives historically were designed to provide crude power without considering the performance. Advances in industrial manufacturing lead to the need of more sophisticated drives which stimulated the development of modern systems. In general, electrical drives may be classified into three categories. They are group drive, individual drive and multi-motor drive. Group drive consists of a single motor which actuates several mechanisms or machines by means of one or more line shafts supported on bearings. It is also called as line shaft drive. The line shaft drive fitted with multi-stepped pulleys and belts that connect these pulleys and the shaft of the driven machines serve to vary their speed as shown in the figure. Here I have a single motor I have a single motor which is driving many loads n number of loads which is having a single pulley and these are the load pulleys these are all the load pulleys and here I have a line drive line, line shaft which is through a belt it is connected between these two even after taking into account the cost of line shaft pulley belts and other installations the good drive is most economical one since the rating of the motor used may be comparatively less than the aggregate of ratings of individual motors required to drive each equipment because of because all of them may not be working simultaneously so even though this line shaft drive is the oldest form of a drive, it has an advantage that the machine rating required to drive all the end loads is comparatively less when compared with individual drive. Because the aggregate value of ratings of individual motors required to drive each equipment 
will be definitely more when compared with the single drive. But these group drives are not used because of the following disadvantage. Any fault that occurs in the motor drive renders all the driving equipment ideal. Considerable power loss take place in energy transmitting mechanism. Flexibility of layout of different mechanism is lost. It is highly inflexible since they have to be located as suit the layout of the line shaft. The use of line shaft, pulleys and bells make the drive untidy in appearing appearance and less safe of operation. The level of noise produced at the working site is quite high because of the more number of pulleys present in the driving system. It is highly inefficient and it is very very rarely used in the uh, present days. Next, next type of the electrical drive system is the single motor single load drive systems which is also called as individual drive. In case of individual drive an electric motor is used for transmitting motion to various parts or mechanism belonging to a single equipment or single load. For example, such a drive in a lathe rotates a spindle, moves the feed and also with the help of gears imparts motion to the lubricating and cooling pumps of the lathe. In many applications, the individual drive consists of a motor which is specially designed to form an integral part of the equipment. In the case of individual drive 2, the energy is transmitted to different parts of the same mechanism by means of mechanical parts like gears, pulleys, etc. Hence, the, the occur, there occur more power loss. The disadvantage is removed in the case of the multiple motor drives. The next classification of electrical drive is the multi-motor drives. In multi-motor drives, separate motors are provided for actuating different parts of the driving mechanism. For example, in traveling cranes, there are three motors, one for hoisting, another for long travel motion and the third is for cross travel motion. Paper mills, rolling mills, rotary printing mechanisms, machine uh, shops, metal working machines, etc. employ a large number of multiple motor drives. The case, the use of multi motor drives and individual drives has enabled introduction of automation in production process which in turn has considerably increased the productivity of different industrial undertakings. Complete or partial automation helps to operate various mechanisms at optimum conditions and to increase the reliability and safety of operations. So, because of this multiple motor drives and individual motor drives, the lot of industries has become automated. As we have seen already, the basic components of an electric drives are a power source, motor, power processing unit which is generally a power electronic systems or power modulators, a control unit and the mechanical load. So let us have in detail discussion about all these sub components of an electrical drive system in detail. Let us have a detailed discussion about the electrical motors which is a part of an electrical drive system. We all know that electrical motor is going to convert electrical energy into a mechanical energy. These electric motors obtain the power from the electrical sources. We have varieties of electric motors. Say for example, the motors, electric motors are generally classified into uh, two types of DC motors and AC motors. DC motors again, it is again classified into paranormal magnet DC motors and wound field DC motors, which may be again a shunt, separately excited, compound or series motors. AC motors again induction motor and synchronous motor. Induction motor again slip ring induction motor and squirrel gauge induction motor. Synchronous motor again it may be a wound rotor induction, wound rotor synchronous motor, interior permanent magnet synchronous motor or surface permanent magnet synchronous motor and a brushless DC motor which is also a part of an AC motor. The selection of a machine on a particular uh, depends on many factors. For example, it depends on the application we use, how much cost we put in in that particular application. What is that efficiency? Where is that we are going to use? Environment, 
type of source available in that particular place. So the basic criterion in selecting an electric motor for a given drive application is that it meet the power level and performance requirement by the load during steady state and dynamic operations. Certain characteristics of the me mechanical loads may require a special type of motor. For example, in the application for which a high starting torque is needed, a DC series motor may be a better choice than an induction motor. In constant speed applications, synchronous motors may be more suitable than an induction or a DC motors. Environmental factors also affect the motor type. For example, in environments like petrol bunks, where environment must be very free and clean from arcs, DC motors cannot be used unless they are encapsulated. This is because of the electric discharge that is generated between the motors and brushes, motors, motor brushes and its commutator segments. In those cases, a squirrel gauge induction motor or other brushless machines are probably the better options. The cost of electric motor is another important factor. In, ge in general, DC motors and newer type of brushless motors are the most expensive machines, whereas squirrel gauge induction motors are among this or very cheaper. So thus, based on all these factors, only we can decide whether which particular motor and has to suit the environment very probably very perfectly. Now we'll see about the power source which is the input to the entire drive system. This is the major source which provides energy to the electric motors. The output of the power source may be a regulated example it may be an utility or it may be an unregulated supply generally from the renewable energy sources. Unregulated power sources must be regulated for higher efficiency before it is fed into the motor. Generally, converting an unregulated power source into a form of a regulated one use a power electronic converters. Sources in general can be classified into two types, AC source and a DC source. The DC source, the main sources, the main sources of DC are batteries fuel cells and photovoltaic cells. AC source may be derived from a single phase or a three phase utility or from a wind generator. Now let us see in detail discussion about the power processing unit which is sometimes also called as a power modulator. What is this power processing unit or a power modulator do in general? It provides a regulated power supply to the unit motor. Modulates it also modulates flow of power from source to the motor in such a manner that motor is imparted speed torque characteristics required by the load. During transient operations such as starting, braking and speed reversal, it restricts source and motor currents within permissible values. Excessive current drawn from the source may overload it or cause a voltage drip converts electrical energy of the source in a form suitable to the motor. It is a combination of power electronic converters. It may be a controlled rectifiers or inverters or it even it can be treated as a black boxes with certain transfer functions. It should be more efficient. Ideally no losses should be occurred in the power electronic converters. It should be very flexible. Voltage and current easily shapes through proper switching control. It is very compact and several conversion are possible with the power electronic converters such as AC to DC, DC to DC, DC to AC and AC to AC. So say for example if the source is a DC and an induction motor is employed then the power modulator is required is to convert DC into variable AC. So, any such combinations of AC to DC or DC to DC or DC to AC or AC to AC is possible based on the requirement. So the power processing unit is the main heart of the electrical drive system. Now let us see a part of the power processing unit which is generally a DC to AC converter. The DC to AC converter is generally used when the uh, input supply available at the site is a DC supply and the output voltage required by the uh, motor is uh, generally an AC motor. So 
A DC supply may be a clean DC supply or a distorted DC supply. Clean DC supply is available from the utility and the distorted DC supply is available either from the photovoltaic cells or fuel cells. The output voltage of a DC to DC converter should be a sinusoidal voltage which is capable of variable voltage and variable frequency. So DC to AC converter is also called as inverter which is generally of two types. One is either it may be a six step inverter or a PWM inverter. The output voltage of a six step inverter has a higher harmonic content which is not preferable in most of the applications. But it can be used in few applications where the uh, harmonics limits are tolerable. But the PWM inverter output is a, uh, uh, output is an AC voltage which has less harmonic content when compared with the single six step inverter. But the distorted DC supply if it is available from a photovoltaic cell or from the uh, uh, fuel cells, the voltage level which is obtained from the photovoltaic cell or the fuel cells is very less in magnitude and that has to be boosted up to a level required by the motor and so we require a DC to DC converter which is generally a boost converter. So first the output voltage obtained from the photovoltaic cell or the uh, fuel cell has to be boosted up to the level required by the motor and that has to be inverted either by using a six step inverter or a PWM inverter. So a DC to DC AC converter is generally an inverter. The next subunit of a power processing unit is a DC to DC converter. The DC to DC converter is generally used when the input supply available at the site or at the environment is a DC supply and the motor which is used to control the load is a DC motor. So generally the uh, speed of a DC motor can be controlled by varying the applied armature voltage. The applied armature voltage if I want to if I require to get a variable uh, armature voltage to the motor then I require a DC to DC converter. So the main job of a DC to DC converter is to convert a clean or distorted fixed DC supply into a variable DC supply. So the DC to DC converter is going to uh, get an output voltage which is generally a variable one. There are three types of DC to DC converter. One is a boost converter, a buck converter and a buck boost converter. In the case of a boost converter, always the output voltage will be greater than the input voltage. In the case of a buck converter, always the output voltage will be less than the input voltage. In the case of a buck boost converter, the output voltage can be greater than or less than the input voltage based on the duty cycle. The next type of a power processing unit is an AC to DC converter. The AC to DC converter is generally used when the input supply available at the site is a AC supply and the motor which is used to control the load is a DC motor. So AC to DC converter is nothing but a rectifier. The rectification option can be done in two ways. The input supply may be a clean or a distorted and the clean supply either may be from the uh, uh, utility or the distorted supply either may be from the wind generator. Here I have two options to get a variable DC supply. One is the AC supply is converted into a DC supply by using a diode rectifier and the DC supply output of a DC output of a diode rectifier can be again uh, given as an input to the DC to DC converter by properly controlling the duty cycle of the DC to DC converter I can get a variable output supply across the armature terminals of a motor. Or I can have a controlled rectifier which is generally a thyristor based control where the AC supply can be converted directly into a variable DC supply by using a controlled rectifier by properly varying the uh, firing angle of a controlled rectifier. So this AC to DC converter is nothing but a rectifier which has two options to vary the uh, output voltage. One is either by using the DC to DC converter by controlling the duty cycle or by controlling the uh, firing angle of a control rectifier. The next important power processing unit is the AC to AC converter. The AC to AC converter is generally used when the source available at the site is a clean or distorted fixed AC supply whereas the machine which is driving the load is an AC motor which requires a variable voltage variable frequency. So AC to AC converter is going to convert a fixed AC supply into a variable voltage variable frequency supply. This can be done by using three ways. First method is 
the fixed AC supply has been converted into a variable DC supply by using a control rectifier by properly controlling the firing angle of the control rectifier. And the variable DC supply can be converted into a variable voltage variable frequency supply by using a six step inverter by properly controlling the switches of the six step inverter. This is one method. And the next method is by properly uh, by uh, having a diode rectifier I can convert a fixed AC supply into a fixed DC supply and by having a PWM control I can have a variable voltage at variable frequency at the output side of the inverter. This is another method. The third method is by using a matrix converter which is the recent technique which is used in order to convert directly the fixed DC supply into a variable voltage variable frequency supply at the output side of the inverter. So here there are three methods by using a control rectifier and a six step inverter, by using a diode rectifier and a PWM inverter and the matrix converter. Matrix conver converter is a direct conversion of fixed AC supply into a variable voltage variable frequency supply. The next subunit of the electrical drive system is the control unit. Still now we have seen power processing unit, power source and electrical motors. The next subunit of the electrical drive system is the control unit. A well designed controller should have several functions. The most basic function is to monitor the system variables, compare them with the desired value and then readjust the converter output until the system achieves a desired performance. So it is something like a supervisory operation. The output, the speed of a DC of a motor has been taken as a feedback and it has been compared with the set value and the error between the set value and the actual value has been taken and processed and that process signal is converted into a control signal by using a controller and that controller will take a necessity action on the converter to get the desired performance. Hence, because of using a control unit in the electrical drive system, the overall system performance has been enhanced and the stability is also ensured. The complexity of putting all the system is based on the requirement. The control option can be of two types. It can be an analog controller or a digital controller. But nowadays, mostly we use digital controller because analog controllers have lost of disadvantages. They are, it is very noisy, it is inflexible and ideally infinite bandwidth is required. So in order to eliminate the problems of analog controller, we have a digital controller which is very immune to noise and it is very ha uh, easily configurable. It requires only smaller bandwidth which is especially decided on the, the uh, which is especially based on the sampling frequency. And if I use a digital controller, it may be a DSP processor or a microprocessor based digital controller, which is very highly flexible, lower bandwidth is required and real time implementation is very easy. DSPs can be performed very faster when compared with the microprocessors because everything can be executed in a single cycle. Complex estimations, especially when we go for a sensorless operation of any electrical drive system, complex estimations are required which can be uh, performed very faster than the microprocessors and state observer designs also can be easily implemented by using a DSP processors. Now let us see how to select the various component in the entire electrical drive system. There are several factors affecting the drive selection. The basic criterion in selecting an electrical drive system for a drive application is to meet the power level and the performance required by the load during steady state and transient operations. Certain characteristics of the mechanical loads may require a special type of motor. For example, in the applications for which a high starting torque is needed, a DC series motor may be a better choice than an induction motor. In the constant speed applications, a synchronous motor may be a better choice than an induction motor or a DC motor. So, first we have to study the torque speed characteristics of a load and based on the torque speed characteristics of a load, I have to select the drive system. Then what is the speed regulation that the load can accept? Then what is the range of speed that we are going to control? Whether I am going to control the speed from 0 to maximum speed or only at the uh, around the maximum speeds. If I want to control from 0 to maximum speed, then an induction motor cannot be a better choice because controlling the induction motor at low speed is highly difficult then this DC motor may be a better choice. Then what is the current of operation it is required? 
say for example if i want to operate the motor in only forward motoring and reverse motoring operation then a single phase uh, controlled rectifier may be a better choice if the if the motor is a dc motor if i have to operate all the four quadrants then dual converter may be a better choice if the motor is a dc motor then i have to based on the converter ratings is also very important if the machine ratings are higher then the converter ratings has to be chosen little bit higher than the machine rating otherwise it will disturb the entire operation then next is the transient operation requirements based on the values of acceleration deceleration the trans the drive has to be selected how much it has to accelerate in what amount of time how much it has to decelerate in what amount of time it is also important then how it is going to start whether it requires very frequent starting and stopping then whether the braking is uh, is required in the transient operation whether reversing the motor is op is required in the transient operation by the load all that decides the transient mode operation requirements then power source requirements what is the type of source available whether an ac source is available or a dc source is available at the load site if an ac source is available and I, i have a dc motor to be controlled then i require an ac to dc converter if i have a dc source available then i have an ac induction motor to control then i require an ac to dc to ac converter then what is the capacity of the load source available whether it is it is able to meet the entire drive system if the load capacity is less then i have to have on some extra arrangement so that it may it might uh, meet the uh, requirement then what is the voltage magnitude which is available at the power up the power source uh, what is the voltage magnitude if it is required if the voltage magnitude is less then i have to put a boost converter accordingly the voltage magnitude is very high then i have to put a buck converter accordingly then what is the voltage fluctuations how much fluctuations are there in the voltage uh, that i have to study and based on that i have to decide my converter what is the power factor of the power of the source and is it lagging power factor or leading power factor then is there any harmonics present in the source and is whether it is going to affect the load very uh, prominently that has to be decided and accordingly i have to select the motor types and converter types ability to accept the whether the load is able, whether the source is able to accept the regenerated power from the load towards the source and it, if it is not able to do that then i have to alter the source accordingly all these factors decides the power so or decides the component selection the next is the capital and running cost the cost is of electric motor is also another important factor in general dc motors and newer types of brushless motors are the most expensive machines whereas the squirrel gauge induction motors are the most cheapest one so based on that i have to decide whether my cost is uh, acceptable for my drive drive systems or not then running cost if i look at the running cost induction motor running cost are very less when compared with the dc motors so based on that i have to decide space and weight restrictions whether uh, uh, space and weight of the entire drive system is acceptable for the application or not say for example in the case of an aircraft uh, there should be less weight and less space available and environment and location environment factors may also determine the motor type the, the environment especially in the case of a as i told you already especially in the case of uh, uh, petrol bunks i cannot use my dc motors because dc motors have a uh, sparkings with the between the brushes and the commutator segments which may disturb the ent- entire environment in that cases i have to make use of an brushless dc motors in, in mostly most suited and efficiency and reliability also makes an important point in the drive selections now let us see what is the advantages and disadvantages of dc and ac drive systems in the past induction and synchronous motor drives were mostly used in fixed speed applications variable variable speed applications were dominated by the dc motors but after the emergence of thyristors in 1957 led to the development of variable speed induction motor drives in late 60s which were efficient and could match the performance of dc drives consequently because of these advantages squirrel gauge induction motors uh, were spreaded over the dc motors and it was predicted that induction motor will replace dc vari- dc drives in a variable speed applications so as of motor is concerned dc drives dc motor require very frequent maintenance dc motors require very frequent maintenance whereas ac motors they require only less maintenance they are very heavy and very expensive and these motors ac motors are light and very cheap and it can be operated only at a limited speed due to mechanical construction they can operate in a very high speed such a level uh, especially squirrel gauge induction motor 
and they are more robust when compared with the DC motors. And when I have a control unit comparison between DC drives and AC drives, they are simple and cheap control. DC motors are very simple and cheap to control and even for high performance drives they are very cheaper. And decoupled uh, torque and flux control. The DC motors are decoupled, have a decoupled torque and flux control. Say for example, if I increase the load on a DC machine, only armature current reflects. There will not be any change in the field current. When I want to have a flux weakening operation, only field current increases or decreases, whereas there will not be any change in the armature control. So, there is a complete decoupled control of torque and flux in the case of a DC drive. Whereas in the case of a AC drives, it is a coupled control, but nowadays the vector control technique has come, which makes the AC motor also as closely as to operate as a, like a DC motor. And it is possible, that you have a possibility to uh, implement it by using a simple analog circuit, whereas to implement the vector control techniques, which is very similar to that of a DC drive, we, for an AC motor, we require a fast DSPs. And the complexity of the system and the cost increases with the performance. And performance wise, they have fast torque and flux control. And here I have a scalar control, satisfactory in some applications and vector control, which is very similar to that of a DC motor drives. So now, nowadays, AC motors are preferred over the DC motors because of the main reason that it is heavy and expensive. Now let us see the torque equation of a rotating machines. Fundamental torque equations of a rotating machines. The motor generally drives a load through some transmission system. For example, the motor may drive a load through gears, step up gears or step down gears, V belts, crankshaft and sometimes through pulleys also. While motor always rotate, the load may rotate or may undergo a translation motion. Load speed may be different from that of the motor speed. Not necessary that the motor and load has to be rotated at the same speed. Sometimes the load may rotate at a speed higher than the motor speed by using step up gears or sometimes the load may rotate at a speed lower than the motor speed by using step down gears. And if the motor has the load has many parts, then the speed may be different at different parts while some may rotate while other may undergo a differential a translation motion it's however convenient to represent the motor load system by an equivalent rotational system as shown here i have a motor coupled to a load and te is the torque generated or developed torque from the motor in newton meters and tl is the instantaneous value of load torque which is generally called as a uh, resisting torque referred to the motor shaft in Newton meters and omega m is the instantaneous angular velocity of the motor shaft in radians per second. Since TL is called as a resisting torque, always the direction of TE and TL will be opposite. Load torque includes friction and vintage torque of a motor. Motor load system is shown in the figure. Here TE is the motor torque in Newton meter. Omega m is the angular velocity to the motor shaft in radians per second and TL is the load torque referred to the motor shaft which is also called as resisting torque. And J is the moment of inertia of the motor load system in kilogram meter square. So as per the Newton's second law, as per Newton's second law we know that force is equals to mass into acceleration that is F is equals to m into A which is for linear translation system. But for a rotating system force is nothing but the torque and mass is nothing but the moment of inertia and acceleration is d omega by dt. So by applying the Newton's second law to the motor shaft, motor uh, shaft we can write Te minus Tl is equals to d into j omega, j omega by dt. With constant inertia that is considering j as constant we can write the expression 1 as T e minus T L is equals to J into D omega by D T considering J as a constant which is also equal to J into D square theta by D T square that is first order differential equation is for angular frequency which is called as a velocity the second order frequency second order differential equation is for angle which is called as a position 
in the, in the second equation j into d omega by dt is called as torque component which is also called as a dynamic torque because it is present only during the transient operation drive accelerates or decelerates depending on the whether t is greater than or less than tl that is whether te is greater than or less than tl during acceleration motor should supply not only the load torque but an additional torque component j into d omega by dt in order to overcome the drive inertia in drives with large inertia such as electric trains motor torque must exceed the load torque by a large amount in order to get adequate acceleration in drives require requiring fast transient response motor torque should be maintained at the highest value and motor load system should be designed with the lowest possible inertia in energy associated with the dynamic torque j into d omega by dt is stored in the form of a kinetic energy given by j omega m square by 2 during deceleration dynamic torque j into d omega by dt is a, as a negative sign therefore it assists the motor uh, developed torque t and maintains torque motion by extracting energy from the stored kinetic energy now let us see the torque equation for a rotating systems with gears different parts of a load may be coupled through different mechanisms as i told earlier it may be through gears v belts crankshaft or even sometimes through pulleys these parts may have different speeds and different types of motions such as rotational and translational i am going to present here the torque equation for rotating systems with gears it is especially used in low speed applications which uses gears to utilize high speed motors here we have two loads load 1 and load 2 load 1 is coupled directly to the motor shaft and load 2 is coupled through a gear with n and n1 as teeth the equivalent moment of inertia between motor and the load 1 is j0 and speed as omega m and torque as tl0 the moment of inertia of load 2 coupled with the gear is j1 and omega m1 is the speed of the load 2 and tl1 is the torque required by the load 2 now we have to couple this we have to make an equivalent motor load system for the system which is having two loads one connected with the gear and one direct directly through the motor shaft which will be something like this which will have a motor with torque te omega m as speed and tl as load torque equivalent load torque and j be the moment of inertia of the equivalent system gear ratio a1 is given by omega m1 by omega m which is equal to n by n1 where omega m1 is the speed of the load which is coupled through a gear and omega m is the speed of the load which is coupled directly to the motor shaft and n is the number of teeth on the gear which is connected directly to the motor shaft and n1 is the number of teeth of the gear which is connected directly to the load 2 so neglecting the losses in the transmission we know that kinetic energy due to equivalent inertia will be equal to the summation of kinetic energy of moving parts that is half j omega m square that is kinetic energy due to equivalent inertia will be equal to half j naught omega m square where j naught is the equivalent inertia of motor and load which are directly coupled plus half j1 into omega m1 square where j1 is the moment of energy of load 2 which is coupled through a gear and omega m1 is the speed of the load 2 which is coupled through gear so if i divide that entire equation by half j omega m square then we will get the equivalent motor load inertia j which is given by j equal to j0 plus j1 into omega m1 by omega m whole square which is nothing but a1 square where a1 is the gear ratio let eta 1 be the transmission efficiency of the gears now the power of the equivalent motor load system will be equal to the summation of powers at the loads that is power at load 1 plus power at load 2 so t1 into omega 1 m which is the power of the equivalent motor load system will be equal to tl0 into omega m plus tl1 into omega m1 by eta 1 where t1 is the torque of the total motor load system 
omega m is the the speed of the motor coupled directly with the load and which is equal to tl not tl not is the load torque of load 1 and tl1 is the load torque of load 2 and omega m1 is the speed of the load 2 and efficiency eta1 is the transmission efficiency of the gears dividing this entire equation by omega m will get the equivalent load torque tl as tl not plus tl1 by eta1 into omega m1 by omega m we know that omega m1 by omega m is nothing but the gear ratio a1 therefore tl is equals to tl not plus a1 into tl1 by eta1 now torque equation for rotating systems with belt drives by neglecting slippage equations 4 and 5 can be still be used where the 4 and 5 is for rotating machine systems with gears however the gear ratio n by n1 there can be equivalent to a1 is equals to dm by dl where dm is the diameter of wheel driven by motor and dl is the diameter of wheel mounted on the load shaft this is the only difference that has to be taken into account when writing a torque equation for rotating systems with belt drives whereas writing the torque equation for rotating systems with gears a1 is equals to n by n1 here a1 is equals to dm by dl now the next topic is torque equation for rotating systems with translational mo translational motion earlier we have seen two loads both are rotating one connected directly to the motor shaft other one directly connected to the gear here again we have two loads load 1 and load 2 one is a rotating load other one is the linear motion load so load 1 is coupled directly to the motor shaft and load 2 coupled via transmission system converting rotational into linear motion so we have to obtain the equivalent motor load system for such system where one load is rotating other one is a linear motion transmission system so m1 is the mass of the linear transmission system f1 is the force applied to the mass and move, to move it to the velo with the velocity of v1 so here m1 is just a proportional to j in the case of rotation system f1 is proportional to torque and v1 is proportional to omega m so the net equivalent system will be something like this where we have a motor with torque te which is rotating at a speed of omega m tl is the equivalent load torque and j is the moment of inertia of the total system neglecting the losses in the transmission kinetic energy due to equivalent inertia will be equal to the kinetic energy of moving parts that is kinetic energy of rotational system plus kinetic energy of linear system that is half j omega m square that is total kinetic energy of the equivalent system will be equal to half into j not omega m square kinetic energy which is the kinetic energy of the rotational system plus half m1 into v1 square which is the kinetic energy of the translational system so dividing this entire equation by half omega m square we get j equal to j not plus m1 into v1 by omega m whole square which is the equivalent motor load inertia j let eta1 be the transmission efficiency of the transmission system power of the equivalent motor load system will be equal to summation of powers at the loads and motor that is t1 into omega m is the power of the equivalent motor load system which is equal to tl not into omega m which is the power of the rotational system plus f1 into v1 by eta1 which is the power of the translational system dividing the entire equation by omega m we get the equivalent load torque tl as tl is equals to tl not plus f1 by eta1 into v1 by m1 now let us discuss the relationship between translational and rotational motion consider a mass body m which is pulled but by pull by two forces f1 and fm at the left hand side and right hand side of the body which is rotated through a pulley on both sides the relationship between the torques and linear forces are torque is we know that torque is equals to force into distance and f1 is the force which is exerted by the mass body on the left hand side and r is the distance through which the mass body moves which is nothing but the radius of the pulley therefore t1 is equals to that is torque exerted by the mass body on the left hand side is equals to r into f1 
similarly the torque exerted by the mass body on the right hand side is given by tm is equals to r into fm where fm is the force which is exerted by the mass body on the right hand side because of the pulley which is kept on the right hand side of the mass body now if v is the velocity at which the mass body moves and r is the distance through which the mass body moves and omega is the angular velocity of the pulley which is rotating then these three can be related by the equation which is from the basic physics of v equal to r into omega since by assuming the mass constant m uh, assuming the mass body m as constant fm minus f1 will be equal to m into dv by dt which is from the basics of newton's second law that is force is equals to mass into acceleration acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity therefore a is equals to dv by dt which in turn fm minus f1 will be equal to m into dv by dt similarly when it is exerted on the rotational system ma force is nothing but a torque and mass is nothing but as it is and dv by dt is nothing but r square into d omega by dt therefore tm minus t1 will be equal to m r square into d omega by dt till now we have discussed the various components of the electrical drive system now the next component is the load torque load torque can be divided into three types they are friction torque vintage torque and torque required to do the useful mechanical work first let us discuss all these three one by one the first one is the friction torque friction torque is generally represented as t subscript f that is friction will present at the motor shaft and also in various parts of the load tf is equivalent value of various friction torques represented to the motor shaft variation of friction torque with speed is shown in the figure its value at stand still is much higher than its value slightly above zero speed friction at zero speed is called stiction or sometimes as static friction also in order for a drive to start the motor should at least exceed stiction friction torque can be again resolved into three components they are viscous friction torque coulomb friction torque and torque present at stand still viscous friction torque is generally denoted as tv which varies linearly with speed that is tv is directly proportional to omega and it exists in lubricating bearings due to laminar flow of lubricant coulomb friction torque is generally denoted as tc which is independent of speed and it exists in bearings gears couplings and brakes and torque present at stand still is denoted as ts which is present only at stand still therefore this torque is not taken into account when we are analyzing it dynamically so all these three torques are shown in the figure 1 here viscous friction torque is varying linearly with speed which is denoted in the green line as tv and coulomb friction torque is independent of speed which is denoted in the orange line as tc and torque present at stand still which is denoted as ts in the red color if i add all these three tv tc and ts put together then i get a resultant friction torque which is something as i shown in the next graph which is very similar to that of what we have seen in the previous slide as i told you load torque can be resolved into three components friction torque vintage torque and torque required to do the useful mechanical work we have seen clearly about the friction torque next is the vintage torque which is generally denoted by t subscript w when motor runs wind generates a torque opposing opposing the motion this is known as vintage torque vintage torque that is they exist due to turbulent flow of air or liquid this is a torque which is proportional to the speed squared that is tw is directly proportional to omega square next is the torque required to do the useful mechanical work which is also called as a load torque tl nature of this torque depends on particular application it may be constant and independent of speed it may be some function of speed 
it may depend on position or path followed by load it may be time invariant or time variant it may vary cyclically and its nature may also change with loads mode of operation so mechanical load torque is a very important torque which plays a vital role in selecting the type of a motor in electrical drives the driving equipment is an electric motor one of the essential requirements in selecting the particular type of a motor for driving a machine is the matching of speed torque characteristics of the driven unit and that of a motor therefore the knowledge of how load torque varies with speed of the driven machinery is necessary different types of load exhibit different speed torque characteristics however most of the industrial loads can be classified as a function of speed therefore load torque is always a function of speed that is tl is directly proportional to omega superscript of k where k is a integer or a fraction mechanical load mechanical power of a load is given by torque into speed that is load torque into speed where omega m is 2 pi by 60 into n m where n m is a speed in ra- in rpm where omega m is the angular speed in radians per second so based on the value of k the load torque can be divided into four types that is constant torque type load where k is equals to 0 torque proportional to speed where k is equals to 1 torque proportional to square of the speed where k is equals to 2 and torque inversely proportional to speed where k is equals to minus 1 so here i have shown four different speed torque characteristics of a load one is constant torque load other one is torque proportional to speed and the third one is torque proportional to speed square and the fourth one is torque inversely proportional to the speed now torque independent of speed that is k is taken as zero this type of characteristics is also called as constant torque characteristic load most of the working machine that have mechanical nature of work like shaping cutting grinding or shearing require constant torque irrespective of speed similarly hoist crane elevators pumping of water or gas against constant pressure conveyors handling constant weight of material per unit time also exhibit this type of characteristic the speed torque characteristic of this type of load is given by t is equals to constant the next type of mechanical load is torque proportional to speed that is k is taken as 1 separately excited dc generators connected to a constant resistance load eddy current brakes and calendaring machines have the speed torque characteristics which is directly proportional to speed another type of load met in practice is one of one in which load torque is proportional to the square of the speed that is k is taken as 2 the typical examples are fans rotary pumps compressors and ship propellers the speed torque characteristics of this type of load is given as t directly proportional to speed square and the last type of mechanical load is torque inversely proportional to speed that is k is taken as minus 1 certain types of lathe boring machines milling machines steel mill coiler and electric traction load exhibit hyperbolic speed torque characteristics in such loads the torque is inversely proportional to speed or the load power remains constant this type of characteristics is given by torque directly proportional to 1 by omega now before going to the steady state stability analysis of a electrical drive let us understand what is the meaning of a steady state operating speed now let us recall the general equation which we had discussed earlier t e minus t l is equals to j into d omega m by dt which is t e is equals to t l plus j into d omega m by dt during the steady state operation there will not be any changes in speed with respect to time therefore d omega m by dt will be equal to 0 therefore t e will be equal to t l the speed at which t e will be equal to t l is we ca- is what we call it as steady state operating speed so at constant speed t e will be equal to t l so steady state speed is the point of intersection between t e and t l of this steady state torque speed torque characteristics now 
let us assume that the motor is already operating at the speed of omega r1 corresponding to a load torque of t1 the steady state speed is omega r1 now because of some reasons in the load torque the load torque is suddenly increasing to a torque of t2 so now we have to adjust the speed torque characteristics of the motor in such a way that it has to attain another steady state operating speed that is omega r2 now by using a power electronic converter the speed torque characteristics of a motor can be motor can be varied and it can be adjusted in such a way that it attains another speed torque characteristics another steady state characteristics of omega r2 now let us assume that because of some other reasons the load torque is suddenly decreasing to another torque of t3 which is much below than t1 now it is again we have to adjust the speed torque characteristics of the motor in such a way that it attains the another steady state speed of omega r3 so this is the speed at which te will be equal to tl is what we call it as steady state operating speed now let us discuss the steady state stability of an electrical drive steady state operating point of a motor load system is also called as equilibrium point or sometimes equilibrium state equilibrium speed of a motor load system is obtained when motor torque equals to the load torque drive will be operated in steady state at the speed provided if the speed is of stable equilibrium that is the drive will operate at steady state speed when load torque is equal to the motor torque then such point is said to be stable equilibrium the disturbance in any part of a drive can cause system speed to depart from the steady state point a steady state point is said to be stable if system will return to steady state stable equilibrium speed when subjected to a disturbance <coughs> steady state stability can be evaluated using steady state torque speed characteristics of a motor load system so the general condition for a stable equilibrium point is the rate of change of load torque with respect to speed should be greater than the rate of change of motor torque with respect to speed now let us discuss the steady state stability of an electrical drive let us examine the steady state stability of an electrical drive shown in the figure with te the torque generated by the motor and tl the torque demanded by the load let us examine the point a whether it is a stable point or not the equilibrium point will be termed as a stable when the operating point will be restored to it after a small departure from it due to a disturbance in the motor or load let the disturbance causes a reduction of delta omega m in the speed at new speed omega r dash motor torque is greater than the load torque consequently the motor will accelerate and operation will be restored to point a thus the point a is a stable point similarly an increase of delta omega m in speed caused by a disturbance will make load torque greater than the motor torque resulting into into deacceleration and restoration of operation to point a again so again in that case also the point a is said to be a stable operating point now let us look at a different condition now let us examine the operating point b which is obtained with the same motor drives with another load a decrease in speed causes the load torque to become greater than the motor torque drive deaccelerates and the point operating point moves away from b similarly when working at b an increase in speed will make the motor torque j greater than the load torque which will move the operating point away from b thus b is an unstable point of equilibrium now let us see the torque speed quadrant of operation of an electrical drive motor operates in two modes motoring and braking in motoring operation it converts mechanical energy into electrical energy and thus supports the motion in braking it works as a generator converting mechanical energy into back into electrical energy and thus opposing the motion motor can provide motoring and braking operation for both forward and reverse directions power developed by a motor is given by the product of 
torque and speed so in the motoring operation the net torque net power developed is positive which means uh, either the both torque and speed should be positive or either the both torque and speed should be negative for motoring operation the figure shows the speed torque characteristics of a forward and reverse motions power in quadrant 1 power developed is positive because the speed and torque are both positive and hence the quadrant 1 is called as forward motoring in quadrant 2 the speed is positive whereas torque is negative and hence the net power developed is negative and which makes river forward braking in quadrant 3 the speed and torque both are negative and makes reverse motoring operation in quadrant 4 speed is speed is negative whereas torque is positive and hence reverse braking operation hence in quadrant 1 net power developed is positive in quadrant 2 net power developed is negative in quadrant 3 net power developed is positive and in quadrant 4 net power developed is negative now let me explain the four quadrant operation of an electrical drive by using a simple lift system here let us assume that we have a building which is having some 10 floors and we are at the 10th floor and if you are trying to call a fully loaded gauge from the ground floor which we call it as a forward motoring and similarly when we are at the 10th floor calling the empty gauge from the ground floor which is what we call it as a forward braking similarly when we are at the ground floor calling the empty gauge from the 10th floor is called reverse motoring when we are at the ground floor calling the fully loaded gauge from the 10th floor is what we call it as reverse braking this is a very good example which elude states forward motoring forward braking reverse motoring and reverse braking of a speed torque plane of a electrical drive